Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we're going to be talking about life-altering loss Uh, with a person who's an expert in trauma. We're going to have some good advice for you today on dealing with those traumatic losses. So, Heidi, would you like to introduce our guest? Sure. Our guest today is Debbie Augenthaler, and she is a psychotherapist in private practice. Debbie was a faculty member at the Institute of Contemporary Psychotherapy and teaches workshops about grief and trauma. She is the author of the award-winning book, You Are Not Alone, A Heartfelt Guide for Grief, Healing, and Hope. And this is a book she wishes she had had when her husband, Jim, died. Welcome to the show, Debbie. Thank you. Well, Debbie, tell us a little bit about your loss. My first husband, uh, now, because... I'm married to a second Jim now, which is really... Oh, you're married to a second man that's also named Jim? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but you know, and happily so. So there's always hope. And I want to stress that that's very important. But, you know, in the beginning, if you had told me all this would happen, I would not have believed anything. Um, that I would not have believed that at the moment, at the time, because when he died, I was in my mid thirties, it was totally unexpected. I was with him. He had no health issues that we knew of. He thought he had heartburn and we were talking one minute and he literally fell in the bed and died the next. It's very traumatic. And it just like people that have had in a car accident with something, I mean, when it happens like that, it's, it's, and I mean, traumatic loss, it can be any kind of big loss where your world, whole world is just blown apart. And so for me, um, at the time, and I wasn't a therapist and I didn't have my training that I have now, but I would tell you, even if I did, I still would be, it would still be a horrible thing. And I would look to others for help because I didn't know how I was going to survive it. You know, in my studies at the trauma Institute, I, I, um, learned that your brain, like it's a biological response when our body, since we're in danger, you know, you have the fight, flight, freeze response, but what happens is your prefrontal cortex, which is the thinking part of your brain, the higher functioning, it it, it shuts down because your body is just going in the survival mode. So you can't, you know, you're only reacting and you can't think, but it's also in its own way, it's, it's a, it's a real gift. I mean, your body does what it does to protect you. And when something is so overwhelming, like that's why people can, um, might, they might faint or they just like shut down or they, they, you can't, You can't absorb it because your body's, it's like an impact to your body. It's a danger to your body. And so it's a, it's a natural reaction to trauma, to big traumas like that, to to really not be able to think or to even believe that it happened to feel like that for days, this couldn't have happened. This there's no way, you know, when you replay that loop in your mind. That's what I was wondering. So, I mean, my brother died traumatically as well. Mm, uh, Very traumatic car accident. So what I was wondering is, Given the traumatic nature of your husband's death, how did you go on and how did you get out of the trauma loop that was going on in your head? Because we hear people all the time saying that they feel like they're reliving it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in my book, I call it the what ifs and if onlys, like this running loop of what if I had done this, or if only that we had done this, or, you know, and, and all the things that you could have done that would have made it stop when you don't realize until much later, like everyone's destiny is their destiny that you can't control these things. But for me, I I just, uh, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I write about all that also in the book, like just to, to to, to normalize these feelings and why your body's reacting the way it is. And for me, I couldn't eat, but I had a wonderful, I was very lucky to have people that loved me but I, people were there right away. Like his brother and mother met me at the hospital and they didn't tell me that he had died till I was at the hospital. And they knew that, and I rode the, you know, the, um, in the ambulance with him, but they knew then that I had somebody there. These, these rituals are really important to help you through. And so, and that makes it real too, in the sense that you have to go through the wakes and you know that he's, 
he, you know, you know, now it's starting to die. It actually is happening. And that's also, I'm sure you, many people have talked to you about the moment when they know like the casket or the, 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 the whatever, those, these kinds of things that make it real. But I think that that feeling of being numb and, and being in denial can, I don't think, I know it can last a while. Like you still, I mean, months later, I mean, I knew it had happened. I had it quote, accepted it as much as I could at the time. But again, don't forget, I was so young and it was so unexpected and he was young. And and I still would feel like, like sometimes I thought I saw it would see at the back of his head and I would think, there you are. I knew you wouldn't leave me, you know, and I'd walk up to somebody and they'd be looking at me, but it just was the natural, you know, it's just it's so hard. The, year, for- the yearning and searching. There's one thing I want to ask you about, and that is this trauma loop. Heidi and I talk to people who have been giving CPR and that kind of thing. That's a whole kind of different category because they have that picture. How did you deal with that memory, that visual cellular memory? Well, even as we talk about it, even after all this time, I could, I could still feel like my, my heart rate is already picking up, you know, yeah. because the body remembers exactly. as we know, right? And there are many books written about it now. When I, when this happened though, we, there weren't many books written about it. Like trauma was still a burgeoning field and grief and loss was pretty much, now it's in the, the thank goodness in the national and global vernacular, people are talking about grief and mental health and all this, but in, uh, in the late nineties, they really weren't pre 9-11. And so I was really lucky to have a therapist who I'd seen when I was younger. My father died when I was 24 and I had seen a therapist for a few years. And so it's like a month after Jimmy died, I remember, I, I, and I was just a still distraught, waking up crying. And all of a sudden I said, oh my God, I could call Shelly. And I, I, for, my mind still wasn't working right. you know. And, and nobody thought to say, why don't you call that therapist that you were seeing? So I called her and thank God, because, and, and she's one of the reasons I became a therapist because she was so impactful and helping me and helping me to understand what was happening and quote, giving me permission, like what you're feeling, you're you're not alone. This is a nap, you know, there's all the things that I might do with my own client, which is why I called my book. You are not alone because you feel so alone. You don't know. They don't talk about it in a way, uh, you know, they can look at you and say, I'm sorry. They can give you compassion. They can do that, but they're not living in your skin. They're not having that loop go through their head multiple times a day, you know, when you hear an ambulance go by and immediately I was back in the ambulance, still thinking he was alive, you know, immediately like these triggers that happen. And then that loop starts. And then I think about all the, the, you know, and it's still very triggering for me, but I have distance from it and um, understanding, uh, but it, it is very difficult, you know, and, and even now though, I could still have like just what if I had done that, you know? You know, I, I love the way you're normalizing this mm-hmm. because I think there are certain events and certain things that happen that you're, they will always be with you and, mm-hmm. and it's a normal reaction, don't you think, Hyde? Yes, and I like what Debbie said about now she has some distance. So you're, you're more able to kind of observe yourself, right? Getting mm-hmm. and saying, okay, you know what? I'm in a safe place now. This isn't happening to me. Mm -hmm. I'm here in this room, you know, I'm not in an ambulance with my, with my deceased husband. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I think those are helpful things as well. I'm just wondering now that you are years away from this event, this, this horrible death that you had to deal with of your husband, is there anything that you wish you had known then that you've learned over the years? I wish I had known it's okay to ask for what you need. And it's okay to say no to what you don't need. You know, people that are well-meaning and like, you have to eat something or you have to, you know, and I'm like, I don't, you don't have to do anything really that, that you don't want to do. I wish I had known that it was just okay to grieve the way I was grieving. And that is what I often will tell clients. And I say it in my book is that it's okay, be you. Everybody's grief experience is unique. There's no rule book. And I really felt like there, that was there a rule book I don't know about? Am I, am I failing at this? Am I not doing this right? So don't judge anybody. If they go right back to work three, don't judge anyone's grief and don't judge yourself in your own grief. Tell us how to get your book. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's in Barnes and Noble. I think some local, if you ask your bookstore, if they could order it, that kind of a thing. And also on my website, there are links. And give us your website. 
It's uh, debbieaugenthaler.com. Well, thank you so much for being on our show today and uh, what great wisdom you have and insight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you, Debbie. And thank, for, thank you for being such a great example of healing and hope after traumatic loss. Thank you. And thanks everybody for joining us on this show today. And please visit us at opentohope.com. And Heidi and I always want to say that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.